Hi, it's Clark and Emily on Sailing Vessel Temptress. And today we're answering another one of your questions. Today, SHJ asks, how do you do internet on a boat? Here in the Bahamas, we have a few different ways of getting internet on the boat. Um, there is a company called BTC, formerly called Batelco, which is a cell phone provider uh, and cell phone service provider here in the Bahamas. So you can get a uh, phone that it has a SIM card compatibility in it and then you can just go to any BTC office there on just about any island where you would find a grocery store or civilization um, and you get a little SIM card you put it in your phone you get a Bahamas phone number uh, and you can use it you can also use uh, apps like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger to call people <coughs> in the states or in other countries um, where you can't use your Bahamian cell phone number so that's one option. They also have just data plans. So you can do cell phone and data that way. There's another company that's a little bit newer called Alive, A-L-I-V, and they also provide data plans and cell phone plans, and that's what we use. We actually don't have a Bahamian cell phone number anymore. We've done that one year before, but we've switched to just a mobile hotspot from this company called Alive. It costs us about $84 a month, and we got the device for free when we got here, and we get 300 gigabytes uh, essentially unlimited, but 300 gigabytes for $84 a month. Yeah, we needed that for this For YouTube uploading stuff. videos and things mm -hmm. like that. But we just use, we have a cell phone company called Republic back in the States that costs us $15 a month just to keep our phone number and not have any data. Mm -hmm. And then we use uh, calling over Wi-Fi in order to make phone calls. So it's essentially like having a U.S. cell phone here. And then we can use WhatsApp and other things to contact people with Bahamian cell phone numbers. So BTC and Alive are the big ones down here. There are more expensive ways to get uh, Wi-Fi on your boat wherever you go, like satellite internet and things like mm -hmm. that. They're very expensive. A lot of the mega yachts use them, uh, but they're not really practical for a boat of our size. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like it is in the States. Uh, you know, cell phone based is mm -hmm. the best option. I'm going to expand your question though a bit uh, from uh, internet to uh, communications. We have a lot of ways that we communicate on the boat. Uh, we have ways just to talk to other boats around us at a short range, usually like 25 miles is the limit, and that's VHF radio. Kind of looks like a CB radio or something, but it's for the, the water. Uh, we have a single sideband radio and ham gear too, because, well, I've got a ham license and I've been doing that for a while. And that lets us talk virtually anywhere on the planet sometimes. It has to do with where the sun is and how strong the sunspots are sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we can do very, very long range communication with that. Mm -hmm. So the VHF is for short range, like boats to boats out here, and then the SSB and HAM are for longer distances. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on top of that, uh, we do something called Pactor. And Pactor is, it's called a terminal node controller, and it's like a modem. And I can hook the computer to the modem and I hook the modem to the ham radio, and we can send and receive emails from anywhere. Uh, it's slow, but we can do it. And the beauty of that, the number one reason we need communication, it's not to talk to our families and such, we need good weather information. And with that Pactor, which works virtually anywhere on the planet, I can send an email message to a robot on the internet, and the robot, just a program, will go get the weather I want, and send me an email with an attachment back. It takes 15 minutes or so, but in 15 minutes, when everything's right, I can have good weather. And oh my God, that is so important when the hurricanes are coming and you're in Grenada or someplace. Mm -hmm. So we've got that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what else is... Um, the, um, there's also, if you're concerned about, oh my gosh, where are they? Or uh -huh. um, if you want people to be able to know where you are and know that you're okay, we've got the EPIRB and we've got, uh, some people have spot. Uh -huh. Can I explain those a little bit? Yeah, SPOT is more about what you're talking about, mm -hmm. where you can kind of, uh, it's a satellite-based thing. There's Iridium, uh, there are the satellite-based phones, but they're really expensive, uh, like per minute. I think they're like a dollar a minute, and that adds up with, with minimums that are really huge. And then the last thing, as Emily mentioned, we have something called an EPIRB. Uh, it's not really communication, it's a very one-way thing when something very bad happens and we want them to send in the cavalry uh, we can activate the EPIRB and the EPIRB only has one message it's the end of the world come and get me it, but it tells where we are and it uses satellites and the idea is we're floating in a raft in the middle somewhere a temptress is sunk 
and an Orion comes flying over and looks for our raft and does whatever's necessary to mm -hmm. save us. Uh, it's something you carry and you expect never to use, but we have one. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answers your question about internet and plus a little bit more about communication. If you've got more questions or you've got comments about communications, leave them in the comment section and we'll try to answer those as well. Thanks so much for watching and we look forward to answering more of your questions soon. Bye. Bye.